I'm Ruth and I love to knit. You're very, very welcome here this morning. It's the 20th of July, 2021. Can you believe it? Coming to the end of July already. And um, you're so welcome here today. If you're a new viewer, you're very welcome. And as I always say, if you've been here for a few episodes or from right from the start, thank you so much. Um, as all British podcasters, <laughs> It's time to start their uh, podcasts with a weather update. In I'm coming to you from Devon, where I live with my husband and my two children. And um, it is roasty toasty here. The sun is streaming in through the window and I've had to pull the curtain a little bit. Um, but I apologise for any shadows. apologise if my face gets redder and redder. Um, <laughs> but um, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. I've just literally got the kids out to school. And I just thought I better podcast now before the heat of the day. I think it's to be 31 degrees C here today. And um, the kids um, finish school on Thursday for the summer. So I thought I better, I better hop on and um, do a little podcast. So you'll excuse me if I'm a bit hot and bothered and flustered. I apologise for these shadows, but hopefully you'll be able to see clearly um, what I'm, I'm going to show you today. Where can you find me? Um, I'm on Instagram as Ruth Loves to Knit. I'm on Ravelry as Crafty Mad Midwife. And I also have an email address and that's Ruth Loves to Knit at gmail.com. And um, do feel free to use any of these um, methods <laughs> of getting in touch with me if you need um, to get in touch. Um, what else can I say? I can feel the heat rising already. <laughs> Just gonna look at my notes as I always do. Um, admin. Um, we're doing a cow, lovely Fernanda from Little Monkeys and Me, and I are doing a the across the pond shawl cow, and um that had, that started on the first of July, but it's going right through to the thirtieth of September, and um any shawl any size, um if it's less than twenty five percent started, you're welcome to to get that out of the cupboard or wherever you keep it and get on to that. And um, on Instagram, it's under the hashtag um, <laughs> across the shawl, across the pond shawl, Cal. Oh dear me, the, the sun has, uh, the heat has pickled my brain. And um, also on Ravelry, uh, Fernanda has a page on Little Monkeys and Me. Um, and there's a finished objects thread there and there's a chatting thread. And there's been loads of chat. There's over a hundred posts on the Instagram tag. And people really seem to be um, enjoying it. Despite the weather we're having in the UK, um, people seem to be knitting away on their shawls. And I know there's people watching that are maybe <laughs> in the depths of winter, depending on where you're living. So um, just hope you hope join in. It's only a bit of fun and um, no pressure. Um, that's the last thing we want is pressure on anybody. If you don't want to join, we won't fall out with you, but we'd love you to join in and be as interactive or as as just knitting away as, as you want. But I thought today I'd give you some little teasers of maybe some of the prizes. Now these aren't even anywhere near all the prizes, but I thought I would let you see some of the goodies that are coming up. Susan needs crinkling, but I've been keeping them in uh, plastic bags so that they wouldn't get destroyed. And the first um, uh, prize are these beautiful skeins. Hope you can see it, there's a bit of sun of Eden Cottage yarn, had to put a little bit of, of uh, my favourite colour in. And I don't know if you can see, but there's a lovely Stilina sparkle. And this one is, is they're both Silverdale four ply, um, that finger and weight. And um, this one is colour weight, is Daffodil. Oh, hang on, I'm hoping this goes round the right way this time. Sorry, done. that's it. And it's, um, 80% superwash fine merino, 15% nylon and 5% uh, stellina and there's 400 meters in that skein and then this matching one is uh, viola, colorway viola and it's the same um, yarn. I thought those you, maybe that, that's better you can see. And those are beautiful, Aiken Cottage, that really lovely UK based uh, dyer and then, um, sorry, more crinkling. If you remember, if you've been watching my podcast for a while, or how many podcasts ago, um, I showed you a lovely yarn that's, that um, 
um, Andy and Ange from uh, Attic Spin Dye sent me as a giveaway. And if you don't remember, it's this beautiful, I'm going to have to hold my hand up here like the podcasters do, this beautiful yarn. And that's their label there. Oh. And this is Fuchsia. And then I thought... One one wasn't enough, so I contacted Andy and said, have you anything that would go with that fuchsia that, that you sent me? And I got this one to add to the um, pile of prizes. Addict Spin Dye, they always come with these lovely wee Progress Keeper, and this is called Violets. And I think you'll agree, you can see it down there, so we're not showing up great. Hang on to the see if I can get a bit. It's just, it goes perfectly. It's just beautiful. So those are two prizes. Sorry for the crinkling. I'm just going to set this over out of the way. And then, oh my goodness, are you ready for this? I'll give you a wee sneak. Can you see what that says? It's a Hohi Locatelli bag. And the smell of this is gorgeous. Nearly scared to take it out in case I get it dirty. Look at this beautiful item. Oh, sorry, bung in the camera. Look at this. Now it's dark, dark navy. It's not coming up there as black, but it's dark navy. It's maybe uh, that's maybe better there. The smell of leather is gorgeous. Lovely. It would probably be lovely pocket inside. It would probably be, I think you could get three skeins in that. It's quite sturdy as well. And this beautiful leather handle that you can take off and move, but I'm not gonna. I'm scared to have it out of the bag. Um, I've kept it in there and that was donated by a lovely viewer of the podcast who doesn't want to be um, revealed. <laughs> and she just said she had it. In, she had it for a long time. She wasn't using it and um, she felt that we could use it. It's not fantastic. That is not a cheap item and I am just blown away and I've obviously thanked her profusely. And you could win that if you enter our cal. You could win those things. Now, there's other stuff, but you have to drip feed these wee teasers, don't you? And that's, so that's our cal. Join in. You could be um, the, the winner of, if you're not in, you can't win, of these lovely prizes. And maybe we'll show you a few more um, things as we go along. And obviously, Fernanda has prizes too. She's been shown in her podcast, um, including a, um, an amazing hundred pound gift voucher from a yarn shop in the US. But we'll we'll work out postage and all of those sorts of things near the time. But guaranteed, no matter where you live in the world, you can enter and, and there's options of prizes. We've been given pattern prizes and oh, it's just exciting and I'm just I can't I'm so excited about it. I really am and of course I'm knitting 25 shawls. <laughs> Obviously we can't enter but it's just nice to be included in the in the cal. Now, the other wee bit of um, administration, I don't, I was a bit loath to talk about it, but I, f I think I want to, is because of the amazing viewers I have got to my 1,000 viewer um, numbers, and um, it's given me the option to monetize my channel. Now, nothing annoys me more than ads. I don't think anybody appreciates ads, but... Many of you will know that and have heard me talking about the fact that I used to work as a midwife in a hospital in Bangladesh. And um, if you watch the news at all, you'll know that um, COVID has hit Bangladesh like a sledgehammer. They're back in lockdown restrictions. They're back in everything. And um, the hospital where I worked has, has sent out an appeal and they never, rarely do that. But they're having to lay off workers um, Bangladesh where, where it's in northwest Bangladesh and um, it's a very rural area it's um, farming land and many most people are day laborers and if you can't work you have no income and I decided that I would monetize this channel to support lamb in any way I can now it's a pittance what comes in but I was just looking you know there's only a few dollars in there at the minute but I was just thinking, you know, a day labourer in Bangladesh earns less than a dollar a day. So any money that goes to them would make such a difference. And um, I like ads are nobody's favourite. But what I do, if I if there's ads before a YouTube video, I go make a cup of tea. I get my crafting ready. I go to the loo um, and just let the let the ads run. And it's for four minutes. 
but through those ad the revenue could go to help people in this area and in this hospital and um, it's so close to my heart there's still a bit of my heart over in Bangladesh definitely it's it's um I'll put a picture in maybe later to show you the hospital but um it's doing an amazing work there purely for the poor they only work with the poor and um the poor can't afford to pay for their medical treatment so um they never turn anybody away and I just ask you now I've only put them at the beginning of the video I haven't I'm not putting any in the video and if you find them in the video please let me know because that's not my that's not what I want to do it's just the off chance that you would watch them and a little bit of revenue would come in and that's what I want to do to support um the people um that are in the area where the hospital is oh if you have any questions on that please um get in touch um I know the need firsthand and uh, yeah it weighs heavy on my heart um obviously we've given you know a donation and we regularly support um that area anyway so that's the i don't think i've anything else to say on that yes do let me know now if they become a problem and they're every 11 seconds that's not my intention my intention is just at the beginning of the video right too long talked about that okay let's get into it so fo's well I had an unexpected FO. <laughs> Let me just get that out here. So many of you will watch um, Lovely Broken of the Woolly Witchcraft podcast. I said to Broken, how am I going to say it? You, you have a podcast called the Woolly Witchcraft, but I know what she means. It's, you know, it's magical how, uh, like sorcery, how we get two knitting needles and a bit of yarn and we can knit these beautiful creations and I suppose magic didn't rhyme with woolly so anyway she she runs the woolly witchcraft um podcast and do go over and 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 see it there's no witchcraft involved and um she has not long been knitting and has such creative talent and she was looking for test knitters for a wee um design that she had um come up with and I said to her like I'd love to I'd love to help you out and this is the bear now her Glaswegian accent says this much more beautifully than me b-e-r-e -E, it's pronounced bear and I'll just read you um she, I was looking for a scarf I could use for my floppy to keep my floppy hair out of my face I knew that I needed one that was nature inspired but didn't quite find what I was looking for so here we are bear pronounced bear <laughs> is a type of barley currently cultivated mainly in 5 to 15 hectares of land in Orkney, Scotland. It's also grown in Shetland, Caithness and a small scale on some of the Western Isles in North and South Uist. It is one of Britain's oldest cereals in continuous commercial cultivation. There's your culture for the day. Um, I'm sure some of you even maybe in America have um, Scottish heritage. So this might be just lovely for you to knit. And it's just a wee quick knit. 50 grams of uh, DK. I don't think I even use 50 grams of DK. Now, I maybe didn't choose the, the best yarn. Hers is a beautiful, solid colour, wheat looking colour, you know, cereal looking colour, uh, barley looking colour, sorry. Um, but I sort of didn't want to break into a full skein. I haven't put my ends in. And this is the bear. Hi. I think you can definitely see it. How gorgeous is that? Maybe even more beautiful this way up. Yes. <laughs> That's the bar sheaves of barley and um, it's for a headscarf. Now, I do not need, I have no floppy hair, but I was thinking that in the winter time, I could wear that nicely tucked up underneath a coat and that would just be lovely. Um, although my daughter has her eye on it. And it's just gorgeous. Seed stitch, then the, so quick, I did it in, you know, a night. And um, oh, it's just beautiful. And her, she wrote the pattern beautifully. It's not out yet, obviously it's test knitting. Um, but once she, once she publishes it, do support her. And say go and watch her podcast. And she's got a sweater and a shawl uh, planned as well. And I will, as you can imagine, definitely put my hand up for uh, testing the shawl. So that's the bear. And um, yeah, give it a wee check out. Watch her, watch her Instagram for whenever um, she's ready to publish it. And just give her a wee bit of love and a wee bit of support. 
The other finished object is one you saw, it was a work in progress um, last time, and it is the Happy Holiday Shawl. Now, now, obviously, a lot of crafters are doing Christmas in July, and this so this was perfect, but also a bit weird to be knitting with Christmas yarn, but I finished it. You see the beading? Beautiful. And then I can see the, the candy canes, and this border, <laughs> was so worth doing but it was a long process but what I love about this now I'm putting this on for you I hope you appreciate it <laughs> what I love is how it sits there's no I off, don't often wear a shawl well I would wear a big shawl like this but I don't often wear a shawl like this um I usually turn it around and put it around like a bandana but would this be just fantastic over um a dress at Christmas or something like that. Wouldn't it just be lovely? We can see the candy canes and I just love it. Um, And even with my bad posture and sloppy shoulders, it's not coming off. And as I said, I said before, if you, I think Amanda with some Shutter Monkey Designs is the best kept secret, honestly. Her designs are beautifully written. If you haven't um, checked her out, go to we. I'll put I'll put everything in the description below. Oh, and incidentally, I was talking to a lady, um, in my local yarn shop uh, last week, and she was saying she wasn't a podcast watcher, and she didn't realize, didn't know where the show notes were. So it's the wee, um, V pointed, and it's an arrow, and if you tap on that, all my show notes will be down below. Now there'll be no links because I haven't worked out how to do that. That's my next step. But the detail, there will be details of everything, and the yarn is um. Uh, Paw Ply Co yarn. Wish you could see this properly because um, there's we so oh, you can see it there. Wee bits of orange, and it's called Stockings by the Fire. Perfect, and um, I used um a skein and about I think of sixty grams left of the second skein. So no doubt a pair of socks will be knit or something else, and um I just absolutely gorgeous and it's the the yarn and then the beading. It's the first time I've ever done beading and so simple but so effective so Amanda I'm chuffed to bits with that I've told her a hundred times I'm sure she thinks I'm making it up but it is just beautiful and that'll be coming out too so there's two test knits well that was a test knit I didn't say that that's two test knits finished and then um other two finished objects are just a couple of pair of vanilla socks um quite a while ago I mentioned um the Marie Curie sock quest and that is um, knitting socks for um, patients, I think maybe they call them clients, in their hospices all over the UK. And I think also maybe for their families too, if they've got enough pairs. And I just said it's a brilliant way for us knitters to really get involved in a charitable endeavour. And um, the, as many of you in the UK will know, Marie Curie is, um, there, is the daffodil and it's yellow. And who has yellow yarn, more yellow yarn than me? <laughs> so the first pair are off the needles just a wee pair of um vanilla socks i started knitting these the day of my operation and um so i put them over for a wee while because uh, <laughs> it felt a bit strange to be knitting on them but the yarn is um lay family yarn and the colourway is Lola. And this was brought out for, um, many of you know Gainer, from, um, oh dear me, Cuckoo Land. And um, she was raising money for um, Bill's special bus. And this was brought out. So I've already knit a pair of socks in this. And there was enough left over for another pair of socks. So that's Lay Family Yarn. So that's the, oh, knocking things over. And then the next pair are, are my June lucky dip cal socks and just gorgeous just gorgeous i just think look at the that's that's perfect that is definitely a representative and it's so soft so soft and this is um from a uh, gardener's cottage and this the main color is chronicon and then the um coordinating colour, the, the sun's really going, or the heat's really going for me, is Wild Raspberry still, and it's Merino Nylon, 
um, and it's just so soft. And that's lovely Kaz's um, yarn, um, who has the We So and So podcast. And uh, you know we've all been thinking about Kaz in these in these days as she's had so much hardship. But it was lovely to knit these socks and just pray for her while I was knitting them. So I'm chuffed to bits with those, and it's another pair. And I'm going to keep those ones. I'm afraid those aren't been given away. So that was my um, June Lucky Dip Cal socks. And um, we'll talk about July's in a wee minute. Uh, so that's everything. Yes, I have a half finished object. So much stuff here, I don't know where anything is. In my beautiful, um, So Beautiful by Nicola. It's very summery, isn't it? The tourists have definitely arrived in Devon in their droves. Every second car is has a roof box or a surfboard or a caravan. And the English schools haven't even finished yet. So um, do knows what it'll be like whenever that happens. And um, but yes, so I thought I'll maybe not get to the beach, but I've got my beach huts. Now, if you remember, I was knitting the little box of socks by Summerlee Knits. And I said they were the most over thinking I've ever done about a pattern, a pair of socks. I mean, come on. And I finished one, I haven't got it on a sock blocker, but there is my first finished ob uh, half object. I think you can see the boxes, can't you? Well, it's in time out because this is my uh, July, no, yes, July Lucky Dip Cal um, yarn. Lucky Dip Cal, if you don't know about it, go and watch um, Hawthorne Cottage Crafts podcast and, and all the details are there. And these were the two yarns and they are Snuggly Stars. Sorry, I don't have the label. I don't know. I think I moved it between bags and lost the label. Gorgeous. And chuffed to bits with it. Yarn's beautiful. The pattern is gorgeous too, but I think I needed to knit a bigger size um, because it's it's essentially double knit because of all the um, floats every three stitches there's, there's a float and I'm just I'm not a shorty sock wear I as soon as I can I'm into flip-flops for a start um I would have liked I did everything by uh what the pattern says absolutely to pattern but I would have liked a taller cuff that's just sitting below my um ankle bone and yeah they're too they're too neat on me so those are going into time out till I decide whether I knit the next you know the other one and give them to somebody or but if I'm not happy with them I don't know if I want to, to give them there's very little given them so I think I wish I'd put on more stitches so the little box of so socks it isn't the end but they're going into time out just for now um so that's is that maybe my first feel with the um Lucky Dip Cal so, um, book. I've knit every month and I've kept up to date every month, but I think this one might be a fail. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Let's put it down there. Then turn over my page. I said that, yes. Um, <laughs> my mom, my uh, mom makes my dad watch this podcast. Obviously, he knows nothing about knitting. Um, and he often says to me, I haven't a clue what you're talking about. <laughs> So, Dad, um, in case you're wondering, an FO is a finished object, and a hoe is a half object, and now we're going on to whips, which is a work in progress. There you are, Dad. You understand a wee bit of the podcast now. <laughs> so, we're doing the shawl, Cal, and um, as I said last time, um, I didn't know there was a shawl called Across the Pond Shawl, and it's by Mina Phillips, the expat, uh, knitting expat, and... Um, which bag is it in? Yes. And um, it's a beautiful shawl. I don't know if it'll show up today. Yep. That's as good as it's going to get, I think. <clears throat> and the yarns I'm using are... Um, have a, the main body is um, just on this at the moment. Lovely autumnal um, uh, colour. And then the lace I'm going to do in, I've got them all in my wee yarn sacks from Amelia X Joy. The lace is in this beautiful colour. These colours are coming up quite well. So I don't want to block the sun out completely. And I've got on not too bad. I'm nearly finished the body of the shawl. Let's see if we can. <clears throat> Sorry, by the way, the sun 
Oh, you can really see. <laughs> That's really effective. I think it's knitting up beautifully. Really love it. And um, it's a lovely pattern if you wanted to. Now, some people got a bit mixed up and thought you had to knit this shawl. Not at all. Any shawl, any size, any title. Um, and I'm, I'm just really pleased with that um, yarn. And um, where's my... Lots of M's today. And my wee potato. <laughs> I'm Irish. I we eat a lot of potatoes. We eat a wee potato. <laughs> oh dear me, this sun. Can't complain because it will be raining before we know it. There you go. And uh, wee potato stitch marker. And it's from a company of Etsy called Rasmussen or something. I'll put it down below because they really have got gorgeous stuff and but I'm not convinced I'll be um saying that right. And then I've just got a what most people call a DPN holder, but I use it for my um, needles, just the, my, my, you know, um, oh, not sure where that came from, sorry. Before I podcast, all these things I got before I podcast, I don't keep a track of, but now I'm very conscientious knowing I have to share it with you all. So that's the Across the Pond um, shawl. Hopefully that's really well underway and that's in my lovely, um, oh, this is, that's it. That's in my lovely bag from Botanical Yarns. That's so summery, isn't it? And um, love that. Then we have the Curvet Shawl by Stephen West. Um, it is a five skein shawl. Um, do I want to bring all these colours out? Well, I've finished with the first colour. They're all from the first three colours are all from yarn, uh, Bird Street Yarn. And um, Hear me that's i'm just going to, have to sit back that first the first color and that's finished with it's got lovely it's it's very almost very very light gray with a wee dark no there that's it all right so that's finished with so that's another something to do with that i think there's 70 grams of something of that left there's quite a lot and then um to show you the as i say i've got i've only got a black and white photograph but I mean, it's everywhere on Instagram. It's everywhere. And the next two colours, the one that I'm on now, this one, this isn't easy, is the this grey. There's no speckles in this. Just a lovely variegated um, semi-solid. And that's what I'm on now. And then the next colour is, it's like a lucky dip, almost a charcoal grey. There we go. And then the last colour, if you're thinking, Ruth, those colours aren't like you, never fear. <laughs> this is my last colour. There we go. And um, then you're supposed to use uh, mohair in between each colour. But I'm not a mohair fan. I really am not. And... Um, I don't like the feel of it. I don't know if I like. I just, as I said last time, I think I've still the trauma of the set of the eighties when we all wore mohair cardigans. But I chose lace, um, and I lose this lovely. Oh, sure, isn't it lovely having the sun? Lovely lace, purple, and that one is the other one. Um, the the one with the little flex uh, is Needle and Fred Disco Goth and that one is, of course I can't find my tags, so here they are, is, I should better show you these so people, so it was formerly Mr B but now Bird Street Yarn, it's on Instagram, on they have their own website, the one, the last one was Needle and Fred Disco Goth, these are all um that's blue face Lester actually. And the the lace is the yarn collective in colourway magician. So the the shawl then. Another wee DPN. This is from lovely Jeanette. She made this for me and a lovely wee tiny sock set. Love it. It's really it's like um heavy, heavy cotton. And then this is where I've got so far. Hopefully you can see, let me get the right side. Hopefully you can see the colours 
starting to so it's gone from the light to the to this color i think that's got you can see that and then the purple in between and obviously it's called the curvette so it is indeed a, a, a curve and i have a wee ice bun from is it um castleview crafts wee ice bun no oh, i'm no good at this <laughs> I love a wee ice bun. Maybe it's a British thing. I don't know. Anyway, so and that's the that's the progress I've made from that wee bun. So I've done quite a bit, and it's so soft because it's garter, really squishy, and um, I think that purple's going well with it. Just so sorry about the way the sun's coming in, but I think if I pull the curtains completely, it'll be won't work. And it's all in my bag, massive big sweater bag. Um, maybe I should have shown you that sitting back out of the sun, should I? That's it there. Um, and this is from Woolrich Crafts, this bag, and it's just perfect. And as I showed you last week, um, the thing I love about it is, where's she gone? Where's she gone? If the sun, if the glasses were off this wee one, that would be my daughter. <laughs> so that's the Corvette shawl. Oh, then what do you do in 28 degree C heat? You cast on all the things. <laughs> I have two new cast ons. Don't shoot me. Don't shoot me. It's my uh, knitting and I'll cast on if I want to. Um, but the next one is uh, one that I have eyed up and um, applied to test it, but didn't get to test it. And but she brought it out very, very quickly. And it is now i don't know what i think she's russian it's called um once i find a picture it doesn't give everything away okay look at that isn't it absolutely absolutely beautiful it's stunning absolutely stunning and as soon as it came out i bought it and jumped on it now I tried a few, swatched a few yarns and none of them, none of them suited. And I ended up going to a yarn that I bought. Oh, I don't know when I bought it, long, long time ago. And it's been two different projects and I didn't like it in either one. And I think I finally found the project that um, gonna, is gonna work with it. Now this sun is gonna be a problem. Hang on, I can't, that's it, this is the side. Now it's dark yarn. I seem to only knit things in yarn that doesn't show up well. I suppose it would be that way. And oh, you can see that, it's beautiful. Obviously needs blocked whenever. And that, that, that comes up, you know, like up around your neck. Can you see that? And anyway, it's maybe too small to to show at the minute but it's just stunning it's beautifully written it's charted and written and um but you start on 2.25 millimeter needles so it is really intricate and um i just i just think it's beautiful and i'm chuffed a bit and the yarn i'm using is um like i've <laughs> i've used it and pulled it out and used it and pulled it out and there's no kink there's no kink to it it's amazing and this is um old maiden ant yarns and it is 100% superwash merino four ply or fingering, 400 yards to 100 grams. And it's called red velvet. So it's actually, it's just a beautiful wine, wine color. Oh, that's it. Oh, that is it. And I just love it. So um, that's sell now on to three millimeter needles. So that might take away wet, although it is short sleeves. Um, but it was a pleasure. It's a pleasure to knit on. And it's in my gorgeous bright um, bag from Rick Rack Room and don't worry I'll put all of the bag makers and everything I've had this quite a while um on the um the description below and if you've never tried Rick Rack Room bags she is she's so cheap not not cheap in a bad way but just so reasonably priced and she often has sales on in her shop so do check her out if you want a good really lovely sturdy project bag and then the next thing because I don't have a five skein Stephen West shawl cast on uh, I um I've been eyeing us up for ages and most of you I'm late 
to the party. I thought I'd missed the boat on this. I know I could buy it on Ravelry as a digital download, but I just love a nice hard copy. I'm old school. I love, I like the hard copy of most things. And um, I tricked the place. I should have bought it when it came out, but I tricked the place for it and couldn't find it everywhere. I sold out, sold out, sold out. And then I found a wee place in the UK online called The Yarn Cafe. Never heard of it before. And they had one. And um, I, it's not often you get a book, a knitting book, where you love every single, um, again, I want to say recipe, every single pattern in the book. But this is it. Look, I mean, look. And look at this. How stunning is that? That's in my future. <laughs> But the one that I had my eye on, and you'll have no shock when you see it, um, is this one. Now, how do I do this? I don't, and there's, there's no um, pattern details in this. Look at that. Sorry, checking the camera. Absolutely stunning. I just love it. So I just thought the best thing to do was cast on. And uh, <laughs> now this is only a three skein. This is only a three skein shawl. And uh, so I um the good thing about um pom pom is you can get you get a, a Ravelry download code and um then you can print it out in a bit bigger than the size of that book because it's not an awfully big book. And so I decided my colour scheme was going to be now these are on the project. My main colour was going to be black, not like me to knit with black. And it's called Winter Demons for ply. It's 35% pole deal, 15% nylon, 400 meters in 100 grams. And it's from Love Hand Dyed. Now, I've mentioned Love Hand Dyed before. Um, I got this for, I think, £7. They were so cheap at one. Now, I don't know what the prices are now, but I got um, two of those. So, And you need three. Uh, well, not just into the third one. And so I have another one from them and it's just not exactly the same. But I think with the nature of the shawl, it'll it'll look fine. And um, then to coordinate with it, I have this one. I'm going to sit back here and this one. That is perfect representation, I think. And I got these lovely gems. These are Regia uh, Merino Yak. I'll show you the... Um... Now, being the consummate professional... I didn't keep the labels because they're, they're only numbers, they're not colours. I didn't keep the labels um, to know which one's which, but I'll try and work it out for you and put it in the notes. And that's Regia Merino Yak for apply. Oh, sorry. Um, and it's just gorgeous. I got that from our my local yarn shop. And lovely Sarah helped me pick it out. Um, the Woolly Beater in Oakhampton. How many podcasts can I mention the Woolly Beater in Oakhampton? <laughs> for all your knitting and crafting needs. And I just think that those are gorgeous and I love the fact they're already skeined up. So what's what's the... So I started and which way? This is what I've got so far. Now, obviously it needs majorly blocked out, but I love it, absolutely love it. Oh, it's just gorgeous. Look. And it's so quick to knit because it's slip stitches. So you're slipping stitches the whole way along. And this is gonna be, this is garter stitch and it's just gonna be so gorgeous to wear in the winter. And it's got my little um, flump. <laughs> Don't know if they're, if, if that's anywhere but, but the UK. Oh, look at this sun. Not be complaining when it was raining, there we go. And, uh, oh, it's even got eyes. <laughs> It's gonna be face and that's from that Rasmussen uh, shop again but I'll put that down in the, the description and of course it's in my favorite bag of all time uh, from show so yarnalicious and um, yeah so that's my um, other cast on as I say it's my knitting I cast on if I want to no judgment here no judgment here and then um, so those were my new whips and if you were watching last time, I was struggling with that little boxes, socks, still don't know why. And saying I didn't like doing um, a forethought or afterthought heel and that um, 
I discovered the Shadow Rat Pail and that uh, Earth Tones Girl on um, Instagram and uh, YouTube had a tutorial. Well, I had never heard of it before, but every... <laughs> okay, my husband says I exaggerate. Okay, nearly every podcast I watched from then on mentioned the Shadow Rat Pail. So <laughs> um, I got this yarn a wee while ago and... I've had a bit of waiting around to do kids are at there's a lot of things going on with the kids to finish up the school year my son's leaving primary school to go to secondary school I am so not ready for it he's having a cream tea we're in Devon have to have a cream tea tomorrow for parents and I told the head teacher I'll need medicated I am so not ready for him to leave my daughter's at, at the high school he's not you know she'll be there but um yeah it's just he has um a few learning needs and the school was just fantastic with them but I digress as usual and I wanted something that I could just uh, knit round and round and then I thought oh I'll try out the shadow wrap heel so I am um, this is my first attempt and I am chuffed to bits with it look at this sunny sunny yarn this is from woolly goodness and look at my heel look no holes I I don't know what the fit will be that's the only thing um I'll come back to you on that but my preference is still heel fab and gusset but I just think with a with a self striping yarn um this kind of a heel it just looks better there's no break up in the stripes there's no um it's you know it just it's aesthetically pleasing and if you haven't tried the shadow wrap heel go for it there's no like it's just gorgeous and so easy to do and you don't you can't lose count I think sometimes when you're doing sh German short rows or wrap and turn um on a sweater or on a sock I have to do it all in one sitting or I lose my place but not this is this is is absolutely fantastic and um this came as a sock set a 50 gram and a 25 the pink let's look um so the pink is the 20 or 20 grams sorry um and that's as i said woolly goodness and um if you're happy and you know what it's called so there you go <laughs> and it's in my little bag from crafty clegg's creations i like the whole thing just makes me happy looking at it just makes me smile every time I pick it up and now that yarn is just beautiful and always with um woolly goodness yarns it's as soft as butter it's unbelievable I better speed this up or you're gonna be please take a loo break please <laughs> stop and come back later if you've had enough so the other things that um I've been asked about at my Norback and cardigan that's in time out not a bad time out has done nothing wrong other than being woolly wool and it's a billion degrees so um I'll that's just sitting and we'll come back to that then um I started the reach for the the stars um shawl and um I have knit some on that I'll show you the this for the un, um it's just a one skein shawl from un, um, under the olive tree knits just gorgeous But she mentioned that she's bringing out the same shawl, but totally in lace, you know, from, from the tip, because it starts for um, oh, rows and rows and rows of um, just stock and stitch. I mean, it's all rolling because, and I would prefer the lace. So I've put that on hold and actually I've applied for the test knit for the, for the new one, but who knows whether I'll get it um, started. And that's using um, Mothy and the Squid, yarn I got in a lovely wool swap um, from lovely Wendy and so that's it's not it's, it's not bad time out neither these are bad time out but I just I'm going to wait and do the the new one and that's in my little strawberry basket we pun it as strawberries uh from Jibby Rousseau's and I just can't get much more summary than that so that's oh and the last thing is um the ripple lake cardigan I put a um a voter put it on Instagram I don't know what I did wrong. It didn't look anything like um, the projects on, <laughs> on um, Ravelry. Actually, none of the projects in Ravelry I felt looked like her um, pattern. And uh, sorry, the road is right there and it's distracting me. And um, some people said, put it away, come back to it later. Um, but I threw all the toys out of the pram and I ripped the whole thing out. So I'm gonna repurpose that yarn. 
I just looked at it and thought, do I like it enough to go back and sort out what I what I'd done wrong? Um, and I just decided no, I don't have the patience for that. There's too many other beautiful uh, patterns out there that I can jump in and knit. And so, as I say, threw all the toys out of the pram and ripped the whole thing out. So that's if you're wondering where that's gone, it's uh, no more. So, right, take a wee drink. And this room is as hot as a greenhouse. Sorry if that's too loud. Sorry, that's our dog barking. I apologise. Um, so, as I said at the start, I monetized this video because I had a thousand plus subscribers. And everybody tells me when you have significant milestones of subscribers, it has to be a giveaway. And although we're giving away these things, these prizes, this is personal to my podcast. And as just on the theme of Christmas in July, just saying it in this heat seems ridiculous. But I suppose there's countries all over the world, Australia, that has hot Christmases. Um, you forget that, that it's not always the depths of winter. I thought I would maybe give away a wee Christmas in July themed uh, gift. And sorry, there will be crinkling, but I don't want to take it out of the beautiful wrapping. So what I thought was I would give away this little project bag. <laughs> um, this is from Craft House Magic. It says Merry Christmas on the wee tag. It's just a sock set or a shawl or a hat or whatever. And then... Um, Sorry, Crinkle. This is a gorgeous Christmassy themed mini set from Ted um, Ted Knit UK. Sorry, my dog's, I don't know what she's barking at. And this is a merino nylon. Don't want to take it out of that because it would totally ruin it if I did. And then, last but not least, some little Christmas stitch markers. There's a little elf with Santa Claus North Pole. There's a Santa Claus and then there's a candy cane. So if you would like to win those things and be part of the giveaway, it's worldwide. Although if um, if it goes to somebody across the water or across the wherever, um, I won't be sending the airmail. I'll have to just trust it'll go on a big boat and get to you by Christmas. <laughs> um, if you would like to enter into that, please just put a comment down below. Um, please be just subscribed, obviously, and um, ask me a question. Just put a comment, um, whatever you want, but just make yourself known um, down below. And by the next podcast, I'll do um, a random generator and somebody will get this lovely wee prize. And just thank you so, so much. I mean, I can't thank you enough for um, just your support. Like there's any every time I turn YouTube on there's a new podcast that's recommended and yet you're spending time with me I can't get over it I really can't and I just oh thank you so much it's just mind-blowing for me so that's that's the wee prize and then um I have had some incoming gifts um I've got amazing people in my life who are just fantastic but well the first one is I want to give away I want to give away on, you heard me talk about the um, Happy Holidays shawl and sorry, I'm looking everywhere but the camera. I do apologise. And um, Amanda's got a really, if you've not watched Amanda, she's got the best Scottish accent for a start. And then um, she crafts everything. There's an, and she's got the craft room of dreams. So, I mean, you can't, you have to watch her. She does quilts. This Her last podcast... <sighs> Go and see her quilts. Oh my goodness, they are stunning. She crochets, she sews, she knits everything. But she did a wee giveaway and I won. And I won this project bag because I don't have enough. <laughs> and this is Snoopy. And it did have a wee pin on it, but I have a pin um, pendant thing, so I put it on that. And it's even got a wee um, Snoopy zip pull. And it's from uh, Jilly Makes. Sorry, it's very unprofessional. Jilly makes the wee but and it is gorgeous and I just love this one. Look, they got her tongue out, so sassy. <laughs> and this reminds me of when I lived in Bangladesh. Um, there was a lovely American family, and um, every Christmas they had uh, Charlie Brown uh, decorations, and they brought them out with them. Um, and they kind of introduced me. I don't know that it was really in my life before that. So it's a lovely memory of a beautiful family. Um. And um, the mum is actually going through cancer treatment at the minute. So it's a lovely when I look at this, I smile and think of Diana and their family. And um, yeah, thank you so much for sending this to me. sent to me really, really quickly. And I was chuffed to bits to win it. And you cannot have enough project bags. I don't care. You can't. You can't.
<laughs> then, um, then um, that's the doorbell, but we're going to ignore it for now. Um, <laughs> then um, my lovely friend, um, Nikki, you'll hear Nikki's name on a lot of podcasts. It's um, she's one of those generous souls you'll ever meet. And um, I am so privileged to call her my friend. And she's actually started a podcast and um, oh gosh, she, has, she hasn't got many. She's just putting her feet in the water. And um, I'll put details down below of, of that, that um, pot, knit, knitting with Nikki, I think. But she sent me a parcel. She sent me some um, Stylecraft Special uh, DK for my blanket. And she sent me, um, she sent some amazing stuff for my daughter. Uh, pens and things like that and then she sent me this beautiful skein of knitology yarn now if you remember the whip the, the rip the whip segment i did a few podcasts ago that some people were traumatized by some people were enabled by um i had a short sleeve top with um really bad pulling on it as in p-o-o-l-i-n-g and it made it look like i had a ghost faster stripe on my tummy and um so i said i was going to rip it out and she mentioned that she had the same yarn. So I'm actually going to rip it out and um, make something different with it because I have enough now for, you know, a different project. But as you, like, oh, just gorgeous. And this was a knit crate, and like soft as butter. I like my soft as butter. And then she sent me a few wee goodies. I shall show you everything. I, you know, I love um, my yarn cozies and she sent me a wee yarn cozy. And then apparently she got me these for my birthday, but mislaid them. She sent me a wee piece of cake and she sent me mm, 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 a donut. So those will be going on my projects and thank you so much Nikki and um, I'll put the details of her podcast down below. And then lovely uh, Lindsay from um, Stitch Create Love, she had put up some yarn in her Etsy shop and I just fell in love with it. And she, she said, oh, well, if you like it, I'll send it to you. Well, no, 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 that's not going to happen. So I said, well, let's do a swap. So if you watch her podcast, last podcast, you'll see what I sent her. But this was the said skein of yarn. I think you can see why um, it was for me. Actually, that's not really, that's it now. And she also sent me the most magnificent. If I drop them all on the floor, that would be really good. Oh. There we go. Um, stitch markers. If, oh dear me, this is so professional, isn't it? I've had them sitting to show you and now they've got all twisted. There we go. And she sells these in her shop. Look at those. Aren't those gorgeous, like precious. Um, and if you're quick, she has, you know, the um, stitch marker necklaces, stunning, the leather thong and the ring and the stitch markers if you're quick because she's sold quite a few of them and that's Stitch Create Love on Etsy as well but I'll put that down below too. I think that's all we'll talk about um, of incoming for now. And then just very quickly I wanted to mention, I've mentioned my, my Cal and a lot of other podcasters have mentioned my Cal, our Cal on uh, their podcast and um, I just wanted to mention some other Cal's because there's no rules about uh, double dipping, triple dipping. You can knit one item and put it in lots of cows and maybe you'll win lots of beautiful prizes. And um, the first one is um, from Knitting on the Farm, lovely Angela. And her cow is uh, hashtag, this is just on Instagram, and it's gifting through the year 2021. So if you're making any birthday gifts, Christmas gifts, anything, stick it in that cow and you might win a prize. Then Stitches and Jacks, lovely Karen, is doing, now I'll write all these down, don't worry, is doing S and J finishing kits and whips mal. In other words, if you have something languishing on a shelf in a cupboard and you just haven't got round to finishing it, now's the time. This is going on to the end of, of the year and get it out of the cupboard, get onto it and put it on um, her. Now she's got a Ravelry page and a hashtag. So check her out, check out their podcasts obviously too. And then, I love this one, but I don't know what I would do for it because I'm not a crocheter, I'm not, and you can knit obviously, or you can do whatever, but um, any fibre related anything um, is Dawn's Days, who has a podcast, and Crafty Clegg's Creation, Jeanette, I've mentioned her already, has a podcast and an Etsy shop. 
And Dawn has an Etsy shop too, if you live in Holland or some on in Europe, um, go and have a look at that because with all the shenanigans EU and all that, she just can't send to the UK. But their mall is called um, the Enchanted Forest Mall 21 and 2021, sorry. And um, go and check out the latest wee podcast they did. The two of them did it on Zoom and it's brilliant. And they've got the most beautiful wee film um, thing to advertise it. And um, so there's three other. You could put one project in all four, ours and the three of those. And I'll put all the details down below so you can enjoy it. You can join in. Oh my goodness, 55 minutes, I better hurry up. Well, that is the netly content. That is everything done. I've sped through it as I always do because I am cooking from the inside. <laughs> and now, as I always finish my podcasts, you know I'm a Christian, you know faith, my faith is everything. We work for a Christian mission. We, um, you know, I want to share the good news of the gospel with people. But if that's not your thing, if you're not interested in that, um, Oh, the other thing before before I was oh I meant to say about the giveaway. If you don't celebrate Christmas, please still enter because we'll get something sorted for you. We get a winter theme thing sorted, or we'll we'll get something sorted. I don't exclude anybody from this giveaway. Please, um, and do yourself in any way. And as I say, if Christmas isn't your celebration, no problem. You're still in. So back to the. <laughs> if you're not interested in hearing um, we snip it from God's word then I will bid you goodbye. Thank you so much for joining with me. I hope you stay healthy. I hope you stay safe and keep on knitting. Bye. If you've stayed with me this long, you deserve a medal. But also, hopefully, you'll get glean a wee bit from what I want to say to you today. And I'm going to say it as quick as I can without saying it too quickly. And, you know, I often talk about prayer on this podcast. And I want to, do you pray? Do you pray? my question to you and I think personally one of God's greatest gifts he's given us is the power of prayer and to be able to pray to him and you know you don't need any special clothing you don't need any special place to pray you don't need to be special you don't need to feel special you can just come to him wherever you are warts and all and you know we have a direct line to God it's never busy it's never engaged and if we know and love him his ear is open to us. I also used to think, you know, I used to look at the world and I used to think, how could he be concerned or how could he have time to listen to me? And then I just look out at this beautiful creation, this beautiful countryside I, I, I live in. I think he made the world, he has time to listen to me. But you know, like all good create all good relationships, you need good communication. And I, I remember I was laughing, you know, when I first met my husband, and I said before we met married quite quickly, and um it was the days when you know you got phone contract and there was a limited um amount of minutes on your phone. And I think we had a thousand minutes, and you know, we used every last second, and even at some months we put bolt-ons to be able to talk to each other, and you know, we wouldn't have gone to bed at night without just saying good night to on the phone and um all the rest of it. And you know, it was just as much communication. I could see him, and now it's like the only tip messages I get on the phone are is the dinner ready? Uh, I'll be home late. Uh, you know, and uh, but like any good relationship, you need to communicate and that's what God wants too. God wants you to communicate with him. God wants you to talk to him and talk to him about the good and the bad. And he's never too busy to listen. But you know, some people treat prayer like a wish, like you've blown out the candles on a cake and you go, make a wish. Or you use it in, you know, in situations like, Lord, if you do this for me, I'll do this for you. And then when the crisis is gone, you forget about it. But I always think, you know, there's verses in the Bible and they say, gosh, it's getting darker in here. They say things like, um, you know, if you pray for it, I'll answer. And that is 100% true. That's 100% true. But I used to teach the kids about God's traffic lights. Sorry about the lighting in here now. Um, and I always think of God's traffic lights. And if you're driving up to traffic lights, and I'm sure, I hope they're the same the world over. There's red, amber and green, isn't there? And that's how God answers prayer as well. The red stands for no. No. The answer is no. The amber is just not yet. Just wait. And the green is yes, go. And if you think about that in, in, the, in relation to prayer, 
And, you know, Isaiah, or God's timetable is not our timetable. What we think is important, what we think um, should happen now, maybe it's not in God's plan. But Isaiah 55 verse 9 is one of my, probably my favourite verses. I'm going to turn you around a wee bit because you can't even see me. Um, Isaiah 55 9, I'm just going to read it for you. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your way, neither are your ways my ways, sorry, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. God can see the bigger picture. He doesn't just see what the immediate need is. He can see the bigger picture and how it's going to turn out. But you know, faith and trust is needed even in the waiting. We can't just take the good bits from God's word and God's promises. We have to go through the hard things too and still have faith and trust in him. Which I feel like I'm in the dark here, sorry. The will of God will not take us where the grace of God cannot sustain us. The will of God will not take us where the grace of God cannot sustain us. And you know, even in the hard times, God knows and God cares. And if you're going through something at the minute, there is hope that won't last forever. And someday, may not be on this earth, we'll understand. But there's a wee verse in the Bible, and I actually put it on my Instagram, and it says we look through a glass darkly. In other words, we cannot see clearly now, but God can. I'll put the scripture reference for that down below. And just to finish off, in Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take. You know, my prayer for you is that you would know God as your personal saviour. You would know him as your friend, your confidant, your person you put your trust in. Oh, I can't even see my face now. And that you would know him. And if you don't know how to do that, please get in touch. Please email me and we can discuss anything Please don't put those kind of comments down below because I sometimes don't see them. And um, if you do know, if you are saved and you do know Jesus as your saviour, even if you still want to get in touch, get in touch about any of the things I've said, if I can help you. I'm not an expert. I am not perfect, uh, but I have a love for God and I want you to have that love too. I can't make you, I can't uh, cajole you, but I hope through something I've said, maybe you would feel your need to know him better. Well, that's all I've got to say before I could disappear completely. <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful couple of weeks. I'm not sure when I'll podcast again because, uh, as I say, the kids are off school. Um, hopefully I'll stay on my schedule. Um, but until then, keep on knitting and get the fan on. <laughs> all right, God bless. See you later. Bye.